Welcome to the 2023 Annual General Meeting of the Lake of the Woods District Stewardship Association. We're glad that you could join us this evening. My name is Garth Collier, and I'm the president of Laudsa. Before we get started, I will run through a few technical matters. We have a lot of people joining us today on this webinar. So we've muted participant lines to reduce noise disruptions. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the Q&A tab on your screen. We will do our best to answer these questions during the question and answer session later in the meeting. Some responses, however, and in the interest of time, might need to be deferred until after the meeting because they require a more detailed response. A voting ballot will appear on your screen for all resolutions to present it at this meeting. You'll be able to vote for or against the resolution by clicking the appropriate button on the screen. If you have a question regarding a specific motion, please click the raised hand icon on the bottom of your screen when the speaker invites questions. Please note that there's only one vote for membership. And if you experience any issues, you can email, email us at membership at loudsa.com or call us at 807-468-8715. I'll give you a moment to jot that down if you need it. Although we meet virtually this evening, Lao Tzu would like to acknowledge the lands and waters of Treaty 1 and 3 as the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, the Cree, and Métis people. This is a predominant land form from which we call in this evening. Specifically, we'd like to share our respect for the land and water in the Treaty 3 territory encompassing the Lake of the Woods area. These lands and waters hold cultural and historic significance to the Anishinaabe and Métis peoples. And in acknowledgement of our shared history, we continue to reaffirm our responsibilities for improving relations through the protection and stewardship of the land and water. Our quorum requirement for members is 25, for meetings, pardon me, is 25 members. I confirm that more than 25 members have joined this meeting online. We therefore have a quorum for the meeting. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. And it is my pleasure now to call this meeting to order. The agenda for this meeting is on your screen. Members receive notice of this meeting by email together with a summary of the 2022 audited financial statements. Notice of the meeting was also published in the early spring edition of the Area News and on our social media platforms. Copies of the complete 2022 audited financial statements and the minutes of the 2022 annual general meeting are posted on the Lao Tzu website. In the interest of time, we have asked specific board members to move and second the resolutions to presented to this meeting. The text of the resolution approving the minutes of the last annual general meeting is on your screen. This resolution has been moved by Jackie Lowe and seconded by Chelsea Lobson. If you have a question regarding this motion, please click the raise hand icon on the bottom. If there are no further questions, please vote now. While we're waiting for the votes to be tabulated, if you can remember when we finish to exit from the voting poll. Thank you. Resolve that the minutes of the annual general meeting of the association held May 11th, 2022 are hereby approved. 
So the motion is passed. Please exit the voting poll. And thank you. And now the president's report. I'd like to start off talking about our summer celebration, which is to take place on June 24th at the Dar Jarnell Contracting Pavilion, formerly known as the White Cap Pavilion. Um, in past years, pre-COVID, and I'm sure many members uh, would remember that we used to host our uh, AGM at, and cottage show at the Winnipeg Victoria's Inn, Victoria Inn. This year as an alternative, and for the very first time, we are hosting Celebrate Lake Life in the heart of Kenora. Our theme will focus on environmental sustainability topics and uh, sustainability topics, pardon me. Representatives from area agencies, government departments, and local businesses will be there to answer your questions. Bring your queries about dock construction, proposed fishing regulations, forestry, cellular, Wi-Fi service, etc. to our celebration. You are sure to find solutions. There will also be children's activities and complimentary food. The mission is free to bring your family and friends anytime between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. on June 24th. We encourage your participation in our summer celebration or in any committee. So if you have ideas or suggestions, please let us know. Forestry update, the April 4th meeting was canceled um, due to a resignation, a retirement I should say, but we know that the Whiskey Jack Forest and Kenora Forest annual work schedule is now available online. The annual work schedule describes the forest management activities that will take place between April 1st 2023, so we're already into that period, and concluding March 31st, 2024. So if you or an association that you're a member of are interested in more information, uh, you go to the Natural Resources website. If you are interested in tree planting opportunities, the information can be obtained from Kurt Puccello at Misan or through Laudson. Uh, Mr. Don Parfit will have a little more details on forestry during his government report. As I said earlier, we had a, a retirement uh, from our local citizens committee and uh, that person uh, is Charlotte Caron, who is a regional man management forester and outgoing chairperson of our local citizens committee. So congratulations on your recent retirement. And for those of you who don't know, the Local Citizens Committee meets regularly with stakeholders to review and discuss the ministry's annual work schedule and all items related to forest management. Thank you, Charlotte, for your professionalism and organizing and conducting the committee business. We wish you well in your retirement years. An update on Coker Road. And those of you who use Coker Road, which would be off the Reddit Road, um, will need to detour east around the Kenora Bypass to the East Malik Road. Coca Road at Kelly closed last November and will remain closed for some time yet. The city of Kenora is waiting for results from geotechnical testing, which will be due later in April. Hopefully reconstruction should begin shortly after. It is inconvenient, but the Essex Road entry onto Coker does work well. A thank you goes out to Carol LeDuc of Carol LeDuc Businesses, Business and Consulting Strategies. Carol has decided to lighten her load and will be leaving us at the end of April. Carol has been our bookkeeper since 2015, during which time her support and professionalism were exceptional. She was our mainstay throughout COVID and during staff transitions. And on behalf of Laudsa, thank you, Carol, for your devotion and professionalism. And if anyone needs professional advice, Carol is continuing on in her consulting business. I'd like to extend a welcome to Tika Newton. Tika has joined the Lake of the Woods Water Sustainability Foundation as the international coordinator. Tika is a longtime participant in the watershed science. She was born and raised in Kenora and lives off the grid with her family just outside of town. We look very forward to furthering our partnership with Lake of the Woods Watership Water Sustainability Foundation. I'd now like to introduce the Lobsa team. First of all, on behalf of the Board of Directors, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Ashley Hoffmeister. Ashley joined the Lautza team as Executive Director last November. She is a local resident and has experience working in the nonprofit community in Kenora. She holds a Diploma in Computer Systems Technology, a degree in Human Resources and Labor Relations, 
and has a master's degree in business administration. She is a solid administrator, a thoughtful communicator, and a very strong leader. Her passion for our environment is also shared with her family. I will now turn it over to Ashley. Thank you very much, Garth, for that warm welcome and good evening, everybody. I'm going to introduce um, our team. First of all, I would like to introduce Alina Collier. Alina grew up going to her family's cottage on Ottermere Lake. Spending all four seasons out there made her fall in love with the area even more. This set a passion on fire for everything lake life and the environment. She found her passion for photography taking pictures at the lake and continued to document her trips to the lake through the lens. In 2021, Alina graduated from Providence University College where she played basketball for four years and completed a bachelor's degree in communications and media. During that time, she learned so much from being part of a team in addition to her studies. Alina was very excited to join La the Loudsa team in January 2022 as our very first marketing and communications coordinator intern. She learned a lot in her first year with Loudsa and excitedly accepted the position of ex assistant executive director in December 2022. She is happy to still be a part of the great work that happens at Loudsa and to continue to learn from the organization and the team, as well as expand the communications and membership programs with her strong communication skills and creative eye for social media. Next, I would like to introduce Brie McArdle, who is a familiar face. Bree is back as the Environment Program Manager. Bree grew up on Black Sturgeon Lake and appreciated lake life from an early age. Unsure of what she wanted to do after high school, she traveled and fell in love with the different landscapes the world has to offer. Noticing she was always drawn to lakes, rivers, and oceans when she was when she realized that she wanted to work towards protecting water quality and ecosystems that, and, that impact them. If you are new here, Bree has been a part of the association in many ways. Bree started as a Lake Smart member for two seasons while she finished her studies at Niagara College. When she graduated from her, environment, from her environmental technician field and laboratory studies, she returned to, to Loudsa as the program coordinator intern. She now holds a permanent position as the association environment, environment program manager. This position aims to provide mentorship to the EPC intern and Lake Smart students create stability, implement and promote environmental programs. And she will continue to work with the team and the environment committee to enhance programs Loudsa has to offer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashley. And thank you, Alina and Bree for doing such excellent work with us. I'd like to now uh, turn to the finance committee report. And I'd like you to meet Jeff Rempel, one of our co-treasurers, who will now present the 2022 audited financial statements. Thanks, Garth. Our auditors, BDO Canada LLP, have completed their audit of the 2022 uh, financial statements for Loudsa, and a summary of those statements uh, for the financial year ending December 31st, 2022, was provided to members with notice of the meeting. Copies of the complete audited statements are also posted on the Loudsa website and are also available uh, by email on request. So here are some of the financial highlights of 2022. We ended 2022 uh, with a surplus of approximately $14,000, which was largely driven by grant revenue that we realized uh, during 2022. And I'll get into some detail here on the next couple slides. From a revenue perspective, our 2022 uh, budget was based on expected revenues of approximately $390,000. Actual revenues of $321,000 was below budget by approximately $70,000. And really, the significant deviation from budget in 2022 related to Lake Smart, Lake Smart program sponsorships that were not realized as well as wage subsidies that we did not realize as well. From an expense perspective, our overall 2022, um, 2022 expenses of approximately $307,000 were also significantly below budget due to the lower environmental programming uh, expenses than we had anticipated. From a statement of financial position perspective, 
Loud says cash position is strong. We continue to invest in short-term GICs to generate a small amount of interest income on an annual basis. The other item of note here is the long-term debt amount of $40,000. This amount relates to the Canada Emergency Business Account Loan from the federal government, which was created due to COVID. You'll note that this amount has decreased by $20,000 from the prior year, as the association repaid $20,000 in 2022. This loan is interest-free, and if we repay the entire amount before the maturity date, a portion of the loan is forgiven. Given Loud's strong cash position, we do anticipate to repay this loan fully in 2023, and we'll generate $20,000 of loan forgiveness income in 2023. With respect to the EISP fund, um, so this includes member donations and, and really some examples of the projects that get funded out of the EISP include addressing invasive species, environment awareness initiatives, so for example, the, the mobile boat wash, as well as the Lake Smart program. We do continue to pursue uh, government and private sector sponsorships for environment programs such as Lake Smart and the Boat Wash Station. But given the, the uncertainty around those government programs, we do always encourage member donations to the EISP fund and seek appropriate approvals from the board to transfer funds out of the EISP to support relevant programs where they're needed. If you have a question regarding these financial statements, please click the raise hand icon on the bottom of your screen. If there are no questions, then thanks for your, for your attention through that section. Uh, Carly Fike, our other co-treasurer, will now present the motion to appoint auditors. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so it is recommended that BDO Canada LLP chartered accountants be reappointed as auditors for the 2023 fiscal year. Uh, in the interest of time, we have asked specific board members to move and second the resolutions. Um, so I therefore move that BDO Canada LLP chartered accountants be reappointed as auditors of the association for the 2023 fiscal year. Uh, the text of the resolution is now on your screen. And the resolution has been seconded, seconded by Chris Semenchuk. If you do have any questions, you can again click the raise hand button. Um, but if there are no further questions, then please vote now. All right, the motion has passed. Please exit from the voting poll. And thank you. Thanks very much, Jeff and Carly. We appreciate your expertise. I'd like to now call upon the chairs of our standing committees to present the reports on committee activities that took place during the past year and their plans for the coming year. Adam Blake, the chair of the Membership and Communications Committee, will present the first of these reports. If you have any questions regarding these reports, please use the Q&A tab on your screen. We will do our best to answer these questions during the question and answer session later in the meeting. Adam. Hey, thank you, Garth. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the members who are part of this uh, committee and the work that they do for the membership committee. On our first slide, we're just going to go through some of the highlights um, of what the committee's been involved in over the past year and what we're looking forward to uh, in this year coming up. LOTSA currently stands as the largest association of its kind in Ontario, reaching thousands of members in the Lake of the Woods area. LOTSA met with the City of Kenora this past summer to present our legacy paddle as a symbol and recognition of our commitment to continue our collaboration work in the community of Kenora. We were excited to launch our 60th anniversary video this past year, and if you haven't had a chance to view it yet, you can see it linked on our website or find it on YouTube. This production showcases both the history of LOTSA, who we are, the impact we've had, and our plan for the future. 
Lotsa continues to create meaningful community traditions with the aim to make an impact on our environment while also bringing our community together. As in past years, you'll be able to find us this summer at our Pine Seedling Day, where we'll be handing out our pre-order seedlings, our market days under the pavilion, and of course, our metal waste collection day. It's a great opportunity to get rid of old metals and electronics hanging around the cottage and have them recycled for you. Lotsa has, over the past summer, participated and attended several regional lake associations in the greater Lotsa area to better understand the unique needs of the diverse area Lotsa serves. And as an example, Alina met with the Autumn Campers Association. We're looking forward to further opportunities for collaboration this summer. Lotsa has created newly developed school-age programming and kids camps, which launched last summer and will continue with the aim of reaching a new and broader audience this summer. The membership committee is excited to be part of the planning for our upcoming Celebrate Like Life event taking place this June, and we're underway in developing our plan for member engagement, including social media to ensure all are aware of the opportunity to come and participate in this event. Finally, our new executive director has been instrumental in creating new and rekindled relationships throughout the Lotsa area that will help our organization reach more members and non-members alike. One of these initiatives is our progress in developing Lotsa Highway Billboard. On our next slide here, you can see some of our social media stats. Further to our communication strategy, we have active accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and TikTok. They provide notices of activities and issues in our watershed, as well as education for environmental and stewardship-based topics. Often these are issues that are later addressed in more detail in the area news, but these platforms allow for more rapid delivery on developing issues. The area news remains an outstanding journal where we can inform our members of concerns about the lake and share members stories with each other remain one of the few lake organizations who produce a true magazine. We continue to inform our members who are in our email contact list with e-blasts on breaking news items of interest. Please ensure that we have your current email address so you can receive these. And finally, we'd like to invite members to get involved in our association, whether it's joining a committee, volunteering at events, serving as a director, or just sharing our work and benefits with a friend or neighbor who may want to join. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam. And once again, as Adam has said, if you're curious and you'd like to be involved, uh, the Environment Committee could, uh, or the Communication uh, Social Communication Committee would love to have you. I'd like to now introduce you to Don Parfit, the Chair of the Government Affairs Committee. He will present the report on government affairs that affect the Kenora area. Thank you very much, uh, President Garth. Our members, uh, welcome to our annual meeting. Uh, in front of you is our Government Affairs Committee. And I'll just make a brief comment. Uh, the last two years uh, with COVID and, and uh, people just basically disappearing into shells at the government level, et cetera, as well as our issues with uh, REDs internally, we haven't met a lot, but our members are, are contributors. And I'll talk about that in, in uh, very quickly here in the area news. Uh, so I want to thank them for their efforts in staying. Um, we will be talking about our 2023 plans, and I'll comment on that in a few minutes. Uh, having said that, uh, those folks have been around uh, Laudsa for a long, long time, so we appreciate theirs. Uh, next slide. We listed here, and, and with government affairs, the, the problem that we have with it is that it, as many of you as watch and know, is that from day to day it changes. Uh, whether it's municipal government, First Nations government, provincial government or federal government, there's something happening every day. Uh, we just can't keep on top of all of that, but we certainly give it our best effort. So when we looked at what we should bring tonight, there were several key issues that, uh, that we laid out and I'll comment on them very briefly. Um, the um, committee here has only given me five minutes to talk. I, I told them I wanted an hour, but they wouldn't allow that. So, so having said that, we'll cover it as much as we can and answer any questions that you may have. Uh, very first Trans Canada Highway. We haven't had anything official from government authorities. Uh, coffee talk uh, from some key people in that is that uh, the project from the Ontario border to the Show Lake Road, we'll refer to it as, 
is a little bit ahead of schedule. So that's good news. But the even more important news is for years, we've been writing to Manitoba to ask them to uh, uh, see what they're going to do, what their plans are. Uh, going back to Gary Dewar's days, uh, they announced the twinning of the highway way back when and nothing has happened. But within the last couple of weeks there, Manitoba did make an announcement that they were now going to seriously start the process of twinning the uh, Manitoba highway from Falcon Lake to the Ontario border. Uh, there's a lot of push still on the Ontario side here to twin it all the way to Thunder Bay. We at least got them going on the first six kilometers. The next uh, 2,000 kilometers across Ontario, I'm not sure how, how lucky we'll be, but we'll keep pushing. Uh, forest management, uh, Garth spoke to that. Garth serves on the Citizens Committee. Uh, he's basically said uh, there's an area plan out. And I would just simply say, you know, forestry is near and dear to all of us because it's in our backyard. And every time the forestry comes along, in a lot of cases, a lot of you folks are away for the winter and these plans get made. But the ministry does have a 10-year plan. And I would just simply encourage all of you to take a look at it and see when your area may or may not be affected. Uh, that way, it'll give you a little lead time to look at it and then talk to them about changes. Um, I've seen recent uh, appeals or maybe objections to what was being done in the ministry and has basically backed off and agreed on a lot of them. So just simply look, keep your eye on that. That's all we can do. Number three, uh, I'm going to put number three and number seven together, which is uh, hydro rates and prohibition on the purchase of residential property by the Non Canadians Act. Those are in the new spring, early spring 2023 edition. Uh, Bob Stewart, who is on our committee, uh, he's a book of knowledge on hydro. Uh, if you look at it, unless you have a real interest, it's absolutely complex. Bob knows it inside out, so he writes articles for us on it. So if you're interested in, in pursuing and following up on that, uh, it certainly was in that edition. As was number seven, Mona Brown is on the committee. The Canadian government now has come out with a prohibition on the purchase of residential property. There's a long article in there um, by Mona and one of her colleagues, I believe. Um, at what where it's going to affect, we have a lot of members that are, are non-Canadians and they're prohibited um, on certain grounds of not owning property. So people disposing of property or wanting to dispose of property to Americans is going to potentially be an issue. Um, they shot at a, uh, in my view, they shot at a mouse with an elephant gun and they caught a whole bunch of people. For instance, there are, are people here at our Tim Horton stores that are East Indians or in Canada on work permits. Well, they're prohibited from buying a place. Well, the other day, apparently, again, if you can trust social media, apparently the government's backed off and said they're entitled to have one house. Uh, so you've got to monitor that, watch it, if you've got any interest in that, uh, and we'll keep you posted on that one. Fisheries, uh, there was a citizens advisory or local citizens advisory committee put together in 2021 about Lake of the Woods and fishing. There were a couple proposals that were proposed out of that group. Uh, the uh, opportunity for comment ended on January the 9th. We haven't heard from the ministry on it, but it basically looks at fish limits and uh, slot sizes on Lake of the Woods. And I don't know what the ultimate decision was, but it's there as well. And there's a site you can go to with the ministry to take a look at that. Uh, nuclear waste, just a quick comment on it. Uh, nuclear waste, as everybody knows, uh, there's a, I guess I was gonna say a competition, but there's two sites that have been selected, Ignace and one down east. Uh, and there's a lot of groups that have either have taken one side or the other. And we know everybody has an interest in it, but what was interesting was about three weeks ago, both the mayor and the deputy mayor of Ignace resigned. Uh, the news has been very quiet as to what, why, or when. We don't know if it has anything to do with this because there's signs on down there. Let's do it. Let's not do it. Uh, there's so much uh, stuff going on at Ignace. And, and clearly, if Ignace doesn't want it, all this goes away. Uh, so we're just kind of following it to see what happens. So you can keep your eye on that one. Um, water levels um, affected everybody. I had 10 and a half feet last year. I'm right below Norman Dam. Um, we have a link on our uh, on our site. You can go on there and you can check the water levels and watch the leg of the Woods Control Board as to what they're doing there. Uh, two very quick comments, last comments. Breaking news when I talk about government affairs. Uh, yesterday, the energy minister uh, introduced new ultra low electric rates to be offered for time of use users. Um, we're gonna have to get into the detail, but Bob Stewart will have a probably a real interest in looking at this. They're, they're changing the kilowatt hours 
they're dropping at a 67% down to 2.4 cents per kilowatt hour, which is significant, but it appears only to be between 11 at night and six in the morning. Uh, their other uh, use rates are changing. So we haven't seen enough there, but we'll keep you apprised of what's going on there for those that you have an interest in hydro rates. Um, another important matter that popped up a couple of days ago is the Ministry of Municipal Affairs announced, and the headline was municipal expansion permitted under proposed housing legislation. And the comment is to make it easier for municipalities to expand their boundaries. And I guess that's somewhat on, on the surface troubling. They say they will allow 60 days for input. We don't have any information on it. We will get those e-blasts that are news blasts out to you in the next couple of days, and they'll be posted on social media, and we'll certainly be following up on it. Uh, that's the problem we have with, uh, with the government affairs. The devil's always in the detail. 2023 plans, um, as I indicated to start out with, the last couple of years have been kind of arduous and tenuous to try and keep everybody moving. Uh, but we are going to meet with our new ED. Uh, I think we have a meeting scheduled at the end of this month to discuss issues and how we move these forward and then what we pass on to everybody. But our goal will always be to inform and educate our members to the best of our ability. Uh, as Adam said, uh, and Garth said, that we're, in, we're interested in getting our members involved. And if any members or if they know of anybody that has an interest on being involved with government affairs, we certainly would appreciate them bringing those names forward to our ED. And if you have any questions, um, by all means, you can ask them, you can ask them here, or you can get a hold of us anytime after, and we'd be happy to deal with them for you. So having said that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, hope everybody has a great evening. And thank you very much, Don. It's unfortunate that every single issue that you just spoke about is rather amorphous. Uh, <laughs> we'd like each one to have something more definitive uh, you know, for our members and for ourselves. But unfortunately, uh, we'll keep working on it, as you've said. I'd like to now uh, call upon Bree McCardle, Lautz's Environment Program, Program Manager and a member of the Environment Committee. Bree will present the Environment Committee report. Hi, everyone. Nice to see so many familiar names on the list. Can't wait to see everybody this summer. Um, so your Environment Committee is co-chaired by Lucas King and Chelsea Lobson. The current members are listed on screen. The Environment Committee discusses and prioritizes environmental concerns and allows the team implements initiatives as a step towards solutions. This past year, Laudza had two Lake Smart students, one returning, Shauna Sensora, and then Ethan Belrose as a first year. Cassidy Mazur was the Education and Outreach Manager, and I was the Program Coordinator intern. Here is a list of the highlights from the 2022 season. We were successful for another summer season of stewardship, education, and outreach. Our efforts were focused on improving our land-based programs and increasing reach due to the record level flooding. Notable highlights include the education and outreach manager position led by Cassidy Mazur. During her time, Cass visited 15 different schools, reaching and educating over 1,200 kids from junior kindergarten to grade 12. We recognize kids are a big part of our target audience as they're the next generation that will be taking charge and taking care of the environment. We made meaningful connections with other organizations around the area, such as Lake of the Woods International Sailing Association, Tall Pines Marina, the Youth Rangers, and more. The Ministry of Natural Resources, Forestry's Youth Rangers joined us for a tree planting day where we planted over 4,000 trees. Um, so it was a fun day out in the sun and lots of hard work. So good to have those connections. These connections we have made and continue to make, plus our members create a community of people that care. Together we share goals, strategies, and solutions. We are proud of the community we have and are excited to grow making more friends along the way. This is the Lake Smart participation summary. Um, the team delivered more than 400 environmental resources, attended many events, and connected with over 2,000 people. They documented concerns over water quality, invasive species, water levels, shoreline health, all things impacting the ecosystems and area that we've all come to enjoy. Moving forward, LASA will continue to prior prioritize finding new ways to expand and fund the program to ensure we continue to share information across the watershed and provide leadership in environmental stewardship. Headed into 2023, the Environment Committee is looking forward to the energetic team of three joining us in May. 
Mimi Master Mateo, Luke Boucher, and Tessa Penna Penner are eager university students ready to act and protect what they love. We can't wait to have them. LATSA will continue to be leaders in protecting against aquatic invasive species with the mobile boat wash station, a beetle release, citizen science monitoring devices. Uh, we promote clean drain dry best management practices and provide a proactive approach to defending against invasive species with their mobile boat wash stations. The beetle release is a biocontrol method for invasive species, the invasive purple loosestrife that decreases biodiversity. Um, if you would like to help in the fight against invasive species, please report any sightings through EdMaps or iNaturalist. And if you want to volunteer to have a zebra mussel monitor on your dock, please contact us. And do not forget to clean, drain, dry your boat. Um, it's the law, plus who doesn't love a clean boat? Thank you very much, Bree. You and your team really do make significant contributions to the healthy environment of the Lake of the Woods area. It is now my great pleasure to pass it off to Ashley, who will provide her first annual executive director's report to the membership. Ashley. Thank you again, Garth. Thank you very much. Um, as Garth previously outlined, I began working with Lautsa in November 2022, and I had a great onboarding experience, which was provided by board members and staff. I have to say that there's so much incredible history that comes with this organization. It's been really interesting learning about how things have evolved over the past 61 years. As we have already seen throughout this presentation, there were many highlights to celebrate in 2022. Alina has stayed on with Lautsa as the Assistant Executive Director, and Cassidy had great success providing education and connecting with youth in our area. She was able to go into many classrooms and attend job fairs to get kids thinking about environmental stewardship. In terms of challenges, we of course saw extremely high water levels and significant supply chain issues, which prevented us from having a boat in 2022 and getting out on the water to do dock talks and connect with the public in the same way that we typically do. Transitions are hard too. With the departure of, our, of the old ED and my onboarding, change can be very disruptive. We take great pride in making improvements from our lessons learned. We noted lessons learned from each event we ran, such as our seedling day, the launch of our boat wash station, our metal waste day, uh, which we will consider when we um, are planning these events for 2023. In terms of plans for 2023, we're really looking forward to getting back to normal. We are hopeful that we'll see more normal water levels in 2023 and some supply chain issues resolved, which means that we will have a boat on the water to resume dock talks and get out on the lake. We will be back at the farmer's market this summer with our Lake Smart program to continue to educate the public. And this will be also be our first summer in a few years without any COVID restrictions, which is very exciting. We are also recognizing the importance of creating a stable staffing model Direct feedback and lessons learned from our previous uh, EPC intern, we hired Bree into the Environment Program Manager position. And as we previously talked about, the idea behind this role is to provide mentorship to the EPC intern, the Lake Smart staff, and to work closely with the EPC on enhancing and ex expanding our environmental programming. We're looking forward to building new relationships, strengthening old and um, creating new partnership opportunities. Some of these examples are working with Science North on their expansion project. And we have the opportunity to partner with Grand Council Treaty 3 on some, some of their community-based monitoring work. We are also hosting our summer event, which we're very excited about, which will provide us great opportunities to connect with the community. And again, as everybody else has said, if you wanna come and join us and volunteer with Loudsa, we would love to have you. So feel free to reach out anytime. And we're really looking forward to all that 2023 will bring us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashley. We really appreciate you spearheading and directing, organizing all of those initiatives. They are very important. I'd like now to turn it over to, uh, in a moment, to Chris uh, Semenchuk. Our bylaws allow us to have a minimum of seven and a maximum of 17 directors. We are currently, we currently have 12 directors. Chris Semenchuk, the chair of our nom nominated committee, will now introduce the persons nominated as new directors. Chris. Hello, everyone. And thanks for that introduction, Garth. Uh, the following two individuals have been nominated as directors to serve a two-year term. Uh, Martha Mankiewicz 
and Wanda Cable. And I'd just like to give a brief introduction for both Martha and Wanda. Starting with Martha, Martha is a resident of Winnipeg and has spent her summers on Nanton Island, which is located near Scotty's Island on Lake of the Woods throughout her life. She worked as a student for Laupoa for two summers in the mid 90s, providing information to cottagers, attending events and testing water quality. Martha currently works as a consultant, HR Business Solutions at People First HR Solutions in Human Resources. And she brings extensive experience and knowledge in human resources to share with lots of staff and directors, as well as a keen interest in issues that affect the lake. And Martha is an active board member of Connect Employment Services and a member of the Human Resources Committee with her term ending on this board in 2023. And on to Wanda Cable. Wanda is a lifelong resident in Northwestern Ontario, currently living on Salmon's Bay, which is off Regina Bay, Lake of the Woods in the Sumeros area. Her background includes extensive education and certifications after finishing high school in Kenora. And since 1996, she's held the role of Chief Administration Office Officer in the township of Sioux Narrows and Nestor Falls. Wanda's interests and activities include writing, photography, graphic design, and multimedia art creation, with her photography and art having been featured in multiple galleries and publications. She is a member of the Nexus Group of Artists and Lake of the Woods Arts Community. Wanda is an active community member and enjoys giving back to the community through numerous committees and events. The returning members uh, for, for this year include Adam Blake, Garth Collier, Carly Fike, Lucas King, myself, and Trevor Templeton. And the returning members are uh, serving another two-year term. The resolution electing directors is on your screen. There we go. Um, I move that Adam Blake, Garth Collier, Carly Fike, Wanda Cable, Lucas King, Martha Mankiewicz, Chris Semenchuk, and Trevor Templeton be elected as directors of the association for a term of two years. The resolution has been seconded by Jack Jackie Lowe. Please vote now. And Jackie should be on that list. Um. I'm not sure. Okay, has the, um, have the votes come in? The motion is passed. Please exit from the voting poll. Thanks very much, everyone. On to the next slide. The slide is the list of the current directors of the association. Welcome to both Wanda and Martha. And as just echoing what others have said previously, we welcome interest from any member in joining our board of directors, participating on one of our Laozi committees, or even volunteering at a Laozi event. If there are, are no questions, I'll turn it back over to you, Garth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for your good work. We've come to the question and answer section of the meeting. Again, if you have any questions, please enter them in the Q&A tab on your screen or email us or call us at any time. I did have a few questions come in. So the first one is for you, Garth. Um, what is the intention behind lots of summer events? Thank you, Bree. 
As I suggested earlier, the summer celebration is modeled on the past successes that Lao Tzu held during its AGM uh, meetings at the uh, Victoria Inn. Our purposes are to celebrate lake life, to engage our cottage community in a celebration, to showcase like-minded businesses, to share our most recent environmental information, and to keep you informed on current issues affecting cottage life. The Celebrate Lake Life is open to all. Uh, we will provide food, fun, and activities. And we hope to see you there on June 24th at 11 o'clock. Beautiful, thank you. Um, so we have a few questions. We have someone with a raised hand. I'm just gonna unmute Craig here. In the meantime, while I try and figure this out, um, what are dock kits? Dock kits are an information packet that the Lake Smart team usually makes up. Um, it's got stuff like invasive species, healthy shoreline, septics. Um, it also has resources like phone numbers for everything around in the area. Um, we hand them out usually at Farmer's Market or wherever we are and whoever we talk to. There you go. Thanks. Perfect. You're on. Thank you. As people noted last year, we had very high water levels, which had a significant impact on the lake in terms of both direct cost of all the damage that was done and indirect costs where people were not able to do things or simply didn't show up. Uh, this is the second time in a decade that this has happened. And the prospect is with global warming that this could happen more often. Part of the problem is that the water flows in from Rainy River at twice the rate that it flows out through the Norman Dam. And so they're addressing the Rainy River question is one aspect of this. But as people on the Winnipeg River know, uh, there's also problems with the Winnipeg River system. And that causes the water levels to raise up behind the Norman Dam and at the lower end of the Norman Dam and reduce flow from the Norman Dam. And it keeps the levels on the Lake of the Woods very high. Uh, there are pinch points in the Winnipeg River further downstream, and it is possible that we could reduce this buildup of water by taking action at these pinch points. My main point is that I think that the, the uh, LOWADSA should work with the bodies that control this and with the government to try and get more of a resolution to this other than just hoping that we get less water and less rain. So I recommend that, uh, uh, that this be done by the, by the association. Thank you. I appreciate your question. We do have a member who works quite diligently with the uh, Lake of the Woods District uh, Control Board. Uh, we can certainly involve him uh, in your suggestions and uh, we can report back to you. Thank you. The next Thank question you. is what species of seedlings are being offered this year? We're doing red pines again this year. Um, we hope to maybe get white pines, but that would be a limited quantity. And that's if PRT, our supply has enough to give us. So red pines. Love those seedlings. And then I have a question for Alina. What role does social media play in the association? Thanks, Bree. That's a great question. So um, some of our other directors kind of touched on the role that social media has, but I think that one major goal that we have with social media is to promote awareness and education. So at our core, we want to we want everyone in the area, um, our members, but also the public to be educated on the things that are happening in the area. And we're able to do that in real time on social media in between um, publications. And I think that it's just a great tool to expand our reach beyond uh, membership and hopefully gain new members. And if not, let people know more about Louds and what we do. Good answer. And then we also got a question for Ashley. How does the Area News Magazine benefit the association? That is also a very great question. Um, a few things that come to mind, um, I think are, it strengthens our brand. Um, 
it obviously keeps with the history. Um, I think that the area news is probably one of our members' favorite things. Um, so it definitely um, um, keeps with that. Um, shares lots of really great member stories. We always have really, really great things coming from our members. And I think there's always fun stories to share, recipes. Um, and we, we always have great contributions from our membership. So we really appreciate that. Um, and then, of course, some of the things that were outlined here today, like our government affairs issues, we cover in the magazine and any um, information that we feel is important to share with our membership, we're always publishing in our magazine. And of course, we're always, always open to suggestions as well. So you can um, send any area news questions, suggestions my way. I think my favorite thing about the area news magazine is always the pictures. Um, one more question here. Any news about property reassessment from MPAC, M-P-A-C? I hope that Lotsa will have some influence in how the reassessment impacts assessments that have not changed since the 2016 assess assessment. I'm not quite sure who might be able to speak to that. You want me to speak to it? Sure. Okay. Well, uh, Don Parfit, uh, we discussed this recently at one of our government affairs meeting. An impact is behind, or they're not only behind uh, in the unorganized territory, they're behind in the municipalities as well. Uh, and uh, Dukura, uh, District of Kenora uh, Ratepayers Association, which Bob Stewart, who is on our Government Affairs Committee, and Barry Baltison are on, they have a great interest in that because, of course, all the uh, lake properties. The province of Ontario, literally, if you do that math, they're, they're two, two, uh, two terms behind. They were doing them every three or four years. So if you go from 16 to 22 or 23, nothing's been done. Apparently, it's sitting out there. Uh, the province, of, they're waiting, the impact's waiting for the province to give them the go-ahead to do it. Uh, historically, when they've done these things, when they do increases, they do some kind of phase-in. But clearly, over COVID and everything that's happened the past two years, doesn't seem to be going anywhere, but it could have a significant impact. There's no question about it. We will continue to watch it, and uh, and I will talk to Bob and Barry to see if they have any more current information on it, and, and we'll let you know. So thank you very much for asking. Thank you, Don. Beautiful. Great question. Great answer. Um, if anyone else has any questions, you can raise your hand or you can send it in the chat or the Q&A function and we will ask it live. You can also email us after and we will get back to you as soon as we can. We'll just wait a minute if there's any more questions. If not, we'll move on. Here's one. Is there anything that we can show on our property that we are members? Maybe I could speak to that. Um, last year, we started a bit of an, issue, an initiative, um, sort of like a blue dock program. Um, we were kind of just working out the kinks and talking about it, but we're hoping to have some sort of member benefit, maybe like a certificate or like some sort of plaque. It's in the works, but we are definitely looking to do something that can show that you're a member. That's a really good idea. We'll refer that one to our uh, membership communication committee because they are working on those sorts of initiatives. But thank you for that suggestion. Perhaps we could fly flags. Yeah, Lots we of... talked about that as well. Well, if there are no further questions and before we adjourn, I'd like to add that Laudsa is the largest cottage association in Ontario, and Adam had indicated that in his, uh, in his presentation. We're very active in supporting other associations and agencies to promote environmental stewardship in the Lake of the Woods area. We're closely allied with FOCA, which is the Federation of Ontario Cottage Associations. This helps us stay current with the activities of other cottage associations um, in Ontario. You've heard about our extensive programs and we encourage you to join us. Our board meets five times a year. At each meeting, we strategize how best to sustain engagement, education, and environment, environmental sustainability. 
we think we play a very important role in supporting the environment in the area. Lastly, I'd like to thank members who are present tonight for taking time uh, to join us. Your input, your involvement is, is critical to our success. I'd also like to thank all of our board members who volunteer their time and effort to make Lao Tzu keep peace in the area. Thanks to Ashley, Alina, and Bree for your valuable contributions in coordinating tonight. We look very forward to seeing you, your family and friends, on June 24th at the Jarnell Contracting Pavilion, formerly the Whitecap Pavilion, for a celebration of lake life. And once again, thank you for joining us today and thank you for your attention. We look forward to working for you, working with you, our members, in the coming year and into the future. And that wraps up our 2023 annual general meeting. I now call the meeting to close. Thank you and good night.